Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Saluna Computing's <laughs> channel, modular scalable data centers that convert wasted uh, renewable energy into computing power for intensive batchable applications such as crypto mining. Uh, joining us to discuss to take us through uh, these pivotal products from Dorothy, Sophie, Katie, uh, and the uh, the variants within them. Uh, we obviously have the CEO, John, that uh, walk us through it. First and foremost, welcome back, sir. Thank you, sir. Pleasure to be back. Always, always nice to be here, Kyle. Yeah, no, pleasure to see you. Yeah, pleasure to see the forefront, too, of these uh, very uh, intriguing projects, to say the least. So what we're going to do is try and visualize this a little bit. Uh, you've set mm -hmm. up some slides for us. If you don't mind, I'm just going to pass it off to you and get you to kind of walk us through these a little bit more in depthly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd love to take you through uh, uh, segments of our earnings power presentation that effectively walks you through uh, the sites and where they are, where they are uh, in, our, in, in our development cycle of them. So um, if you take a look here, I, I always want to start by explaining what we do as a company and you know how we make money. And, and it's important to have that context before looking at the, the earnings power and design of these sites. You know, we're business primarily focused on uh, helping renewable energy uh, projects and project owners monetize their energy, you know, our uh, brand promises that we help you sell every megawatt. And so we buy that curtailed energy from the renewable power plants, convert it into clean, low-cost global computing. And then that maps into a host of different types of computing. Today, it's Bitcoin mining, and tomorrow, we believe it will be more than that. Uh, these are big market opportunities. Uh, Bitcoin is, is a large market with big players in the space, and we're growing, uh, and we're already sort of approaching the 2x a hash uh, phase. And so um, we see lots of growth opportunity for us, but there are other markets that we can take this to that could fit within these facilities and help to address this issue of wasted energy. We make money in four ways, two primarily today. The blue column here is you know, uh, proprietary Bitcoin mining and, and JV type uh, style uh, structures that are inside of our projects. Uh, we do have one site that um, we've moved from primarily 100% uh, proprietary mining to uh, hosting. And so we're shifting a lot of our business to hosting for Bitcoin miners. So other large enterprise miners that come into our facility, we tend to focus on the ones that care about sustainability and uh, care about helping us um, you know, make the entire market uh, more mature and clean. On the right side are future revenue opportunities. One is uh, finding customers that would host their GPU compute in our facilities and uh, uh, benefit from the sustainable low-cost energy that we make available. And then the, the the last area is we make the data center itself a resource to the grid by providing ancillary services, and so we can monetize it that way. In all of the projections that we have in most of our uh, financials, we don't include the the, the orange portions. But when we do, they have material effects on the potential growth of the business. Um, you know, this is this is our sort of flywheel here. At the top, we source the low cost power from IPPs. We build out these these modular data centers. Um, we design them to have a two year uh, uh, return on invested capital. That then attracts customers for different markets. We provide the grid uh, ancillary services. So that's our revenue uh, part of the clock, if you will, and continuing around the clock here that allows us to generate um, profits and EBITDA, which allows us to grow our assets under management across a fixed cost basis. And then that allows us to invest in more projects, grow the pipeline, and then begin the cycle again. I want to look at some of our projects to give you a sense of the earnings power. Uh, Dorothy 1A is part of the 100 megawatt uh, project we have in Texas. To the right there is an aerial view of the of the facility with our proprietary design and layout. Uh, 1A is a 25 megawatt portion of that. It's actually the middle row there and part of the top row, uh, row on the right. And it's primarily a hosting uh, business model. Uh, we project an annualized revenue for this project of about $16.5 million. It is operational, and we have a, a couple of strategic customers in that facility, and that generates a $7.3 million EBITDA. 
we share this uh, site with uh, with Springline Capital, their majority owner on the site. So all of that seven and a half is not our EBITDA, but it shows you that each project can generate on that order. So that's the rule of thumb that we typically give to folks. If you think about our pipeline, we have north of 700 megawatts uh, that are, you know, line of sight out of 2.2 gigawatts that are maturing. So every 25 megawatts we add generates $7 million. So if we own 100%, that's $7 million that benefits the full company. If we own a portion of that, uh, our portion flows up to the top. Springland Capital has been a great partner for us. And, uh, you know, they have the ability and investment capacity to help us build out more projects. This, in that earnings power presentation, takes you through sort of the full p and I won't go through that. Uh, Dorothy 1B is a example of the joint venture type um, projects that we do where um, 25 megawatts of proprietary mining gets us, you know, 17.8 or so uh, million dollars of revenue, uh, 8.2 of, of EBITDA. And uh, look at these power prices. You know, we're talking about on, on the order of like 27, 28 dollars per megawatt hour, 2.7, 2.8 cents per kilowatt hour. These are all our true power costs. Uh, a lot of our uh, peers in the in the space uh, show you their power costs net of having done um, certain power hedging or uh, ancillary services netting out. So the true power cost is much higher. So if we add in uh, additional revenues from other sources, the, the effective power cost for us could be a lot lower than this. So our model is a very uh, robust one from a cost perspective. Our partner here is Navitas Global, a new private equity firm that's really entered the space, come from uh, real estate and other markets, see the value of owning infrastructure, uh, decided to partner with us, and, and we're building that out in this facility. Now, this is Dorothy 1A, 1B. There's a Dorothy 2 uh, that could you know build you know significant value to us uh, here. And that would uh, add, you know, double that 25, right? So we would take um, the next 50 megawatts has the potential to generate about $30 million of, of revenue for us and $16 million of gross margin over an annualized period. This one is shovel ready. It's already been approved by the ERCOT process. So take the picture on the right there and basically, multi, you know, double it. <laughs> That's what you would get. And so the power cost is the same. And we've started uh, talking to potential partners uh, there, including the existing partners on the site. And then I want to go back to uh, Project Sophie. Uh, Project Sophie is one of our first flagship uh, projects that um, it was a facility that's built on grid and uh, designed to help the Kentucky grid address uh, you know, power overages and adding more flexibility to uh, power demand you know, uh, there have been several really bad storms in the Kentucky region. TBA saw a lot of damage. And to this day, you know, we had them visit our offices. They talked about how uh, incredibly fast our facility could respond to them needing access to the power that we were using. So we gave it back to the grid. So we do hosting there. Uh, we have 25 megawatts of that. Here we pass through our power costs. And so revenue uh, if you included the power, it would be a lot higher. But from an accounting perspective, we have to net it out, if you will. So we can't count the what we're not passing, what we're passing through as revenue. But you can see the order, the order of magnitude is is lower, but it's still a very profitable site. Power costs also uh, in a in a strong uh, range, uh, potentially even lower these days. And um, it's a sort of hydro hybrid uh, hybrid model on the grid. And in the last project. Um, I want to uh, touch on is Project Katie. This is the project we announced earlier this year. is a 166 megawatt project. Uh, it'll look similar to Dorothy, but it will be attached to a much bigger wind farm. Uh, it's um, twice the size of Dorothy. Uh, we'll build it in a couple of phases. The power cost is, uh, you know, very much similar to Dorothy in terms of revenue and margin. We can't tell you what it is until we decide the business model there. It's still in development. But one thing I can say is that Katie uh, has been moving very quickly through the process because we've learned so much from the Dorothy project. And we're essentially cookie cutting, you know, moving a lot of the structure uh, processes and partners over to that site, which will allow us to go um, a lot faster. And so this is, you know, this is our sort of overall uh, 
structure opportunities that really drive the value of our business. What we've become really good at, at is identifying these projects, getting them monetized, build drawing capital in and building them out. And so we've got north of a two gigawatts more that we can pull from. And of those two gigawatts, we can we have clear visibility into, you know, about 700 megawatts of it that um, after KD will start to mature as well. Well, on that note, uh, there's a lot of catalysts that clearly have to come into play here. And as that news hits the wire, uh, I implore the uh, viewers to consider subscribing for those updates as we continue to uh, evolve this story. To let us know what you think in the comments section as well. Uh, but on that, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.